Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Bert. Thank you for joining. You can hear me? This is the second, the third webinar we do in this week. And so far with the uh, with great audience. So I'll try to do my best again and answer all your questions. But first of all, I'll give you a general presentation that will cover most of the questions that we have received from you via mail and other channels. Thank you for that. Um, let's start with the with the rules first. And it is, please keep your microphones muted. Thank you. Because otherwise we'll have a lot of noise coming on. We are nearly 80, so if you could do that. Nicola also, thank you. <laughs> That'd be nice. Uh, well, I'll, I'll do a presentation of about 25 minutes, I think. And then via the chat or during the, meet, during the meeting, you can um, post your questions and I will try to go through them. But I hope that the, the, the presentation will already give you a lot of uh, answers. So most of you, I think, know already the, the brand Mud Jeans. I will get into how we started and how we financed it all, what we try to do and why we do it. So a little bit about myself. I'm now 58 and I started my career in the textile industry in China, or better Taiwan, Taipei, where I um, joined a, a trading company, uh, traded in, in uh, textiles. It was the great good old times where there were still quotas, uh, beautiful factories, beautiful products, uh, very high quality things. And I've seen the, the textile industry exploding to something called fast fashion and, and with pain in my heart. So we tried to do something different. So to start eight years ago, 2012, we created Mud Jeans International. And I did that because um, I've seen with my own eyes how the textile industry exploded into fast fashion. And I wanted to do something about that. I was lucky enough to have some money in front of me, which I'll explain later. So I could start with, with a little bit of finance of my own, which is an advice to people that want to start a startup. Make sure that you have your first one or two years where you can live without a salary and in, invest in a company. Otherwise, it gets very difficult. And it's already very difficult, even if you have that. So we started the first and only circular denim, denim brand in the world. And to give you some information, uh, I did my first TED talk in 2015. We received uh, some support in 2016 from the Dutch government. I will get into this details later. So again, 2012, the creation. In 2013, we thought it's a good idea to launch uh, Leisure Jeans. And again, I will explain later how we got to that and why. In 2013, Danik joined the team and became very quickly one of the shareholders. We did our first uh, one planet crowd crowdfunding in 2014. It was partly a loan and partly pre-sales of products. I say these kind of things because those are answers to most of the questions you've asked. Uh, we were one of the first B Corpses in uh, the Netherlands. And for the ones who don't know what a B Corps is, I have a whole uh, part of this presentation about B Corp because I'm a really big fan of that. We are. In 2014, Dion and Petra joined our management team and also became shareholders, invested money and time. And that's the way to grow. If you have a, a startup, uh, one of the advices is, of course, create a team with like-minded people that think in the same way and that are ready to invest and, and put their time and effort and, and knowledge into this kind of thing. Because it's, it's not a company, it's more like a movement. In 2015, Stichting Doen, maybe you know them, uh, granted us our first loan, growth capital. It was a loan, so that's quite hard because after one or two years, you have to start paying back the money. So that's, that's even more difficult if you're growing. And in 2016, the only bank that was 
happy to uh, to help us and to grant us a credit line also a Trilos Bank because you can imagine in the te textile industry that sometimes you have to buy goods you're selling goods uh, your shops uh, pay later so the gap between buying and selling gets bigger and uh, there's more and more money involved that's outstanding uh, then a, a benchmark for us was 2018 when we did our first turnover of a million which is for investors and and, and uh, companies important because it, it's it's uh, I think it's known that only four percent of, of startups reach the first million turnover so it's it's a it's a landmark for us and because of that and because of the the the, the, the files we made for investors um, we received a, a, an equity investment in 2019 of over 1 million euros which really helped us to try to make the next steps of course that is uh, at the time now um, getting difficult but the plan is still good and still there um, so why a, a jeans company we believe that um, if you want to change something in the textile industry, you take the biggest item. Everybody has a pair of jeans and it's also the most polluting item. So there's really something to do there. And um, our vision is that we believe that living a sincere and honest life is only possible if we're mindful of nature and people. And that goes even, this is a slide we made a few years ago. It goes very well today, I would say. So where does it all start? And where does it all go wrong? That's the cotton. It's a fantastic material, a fantastic plant, but the way we do it today is not really very good. We use about two or three percent arable land and um, the pesticides used and the insecticides are, are huge. It's more than 16 percent. Some people even say to 24 percent and that's horrible. So it's, it's polluting water. It's using a lot of water. It's done uh, by people that are not protected. I'll go through this, we'll get to, um, I think you know all this already, but I have to tell the story about the, the Aral Sea and the water used and what's left of it. Um, and to make it even worse, and I, I'll promise you later, it will get more positive and more interesting, but you might know this already, but please have a look at these facts and they still shock me every time I read them out loud. One garbage truck full of textiles is being trashed every second. Um, almost 2 billion pairs of jeans were sold in 2017 and growing around 10% of the worldwide emission of CO2 is caused by fashion when you take the whole fashion industry and nobody really talks about it. Luckily now it, it's getting uh, important but until one or two years ago we all talked about energy and about CO2 emission but the textile industry was sort of left behind and not talked about. Today it's, it's an issue and that's good. We're happy with that, that, that it's getting uh, into um, people's minds. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you see this? I'm getting a, a strange screen here. Okay. Sorry about that. So we want to do things differently and start with the genes and instead of doing a linear model we wanted to change into a circular model because we make cotton we make uh, we use organic cotton and um, at that time in the start we said okay let's try to get this organic cotton back so the circular economy means for us let's try to design something that is um, when it comes back to you you can easily reuse it uh, it's like in the paper industry where old paper 17 years ago uh, people decided to to get back old paper and reuse it again instead of cutting trees but well, with cotton it's about the same you can get back old cotton like jeans and uh, reuse them in your in your process of making new jeans so we look at the design to make sure that when we get the product back it's easy to uh, to reuse so you can either buy a pair of jeans from us uh, or lease a pair of jeans uh, when you buy it you get a 10 euro discount and when you lease it we hope that after 12 months you either keep it as long as you want but it's paid for or send it back to us and and switch to another model a new design or a new um, color washing 
And in the whole chain, we look how we can improve things. So for, instance, for us, circular design means uh, not adding extra materials like leather. So we don't use leather labels. Uh, that's very nice because it also gives us uh, the vegan uh, point of view. So we are also a vegan brand now. The buttons are um, of one material. They used to be of three materials with plastic and another material. So now it's all stainless steel, which can easily be recycled. You can lease or buy. And the lease the system is you become a member for 29 euro. And after uh, every month for 12 months, you pay 750. And that's it. So then the jeans are paid. Uh, when you want to switch after one year, you can select a new pair and send your old back and, and take a new one and, and have uh, another color. And the 750 goes then again for 12 months. So the advantage of this is that people you know, we don't want to push fast fashion, but people do have a chance to sort of change their look without uh, polluting too much the world and without having this idea of being pushed by fast fashion. And uh, the good thing for a company like ours is that we have a very solid um, group of customers that, that like our jeans and, and like the way we do business and they keep on connecting with us and, and taking sometimes new pairs of jeans. So if we do all this, we save around 29% uh, water, nearly 70% CO2 is saved. And we can today go up to 40% post-consumer waste. So that means in our new genes, 40% all genes are used. And that's uh, the most you can get in the market at this time of point, point of time. Some competitors of ours are using now 20% recycled pre-consumer waste. That means cutting losses and this kind of things. But we really are uh, using old genes that get shredded in Spain and they are being used in our new genes. So we have to add new organic cotton, but still we can use uh, up to 40%. So imagine the impact it means for the world if we could use, or if we could grow less 40% of what we do today in cotton, if everybody would do this. So then, again, back to the questions. We very often get the questions, well, who, who do you sell this to? We all know the problem. We all know that jeans is a very polluting item. You try to do it better. But who is interested? Who are you touching? So we call them the, the cultural creative. Uh, it's explained here. So they're well informed. They care about sustainability and the climate. And uh, actually this time of what's happening now with the whole Corona uh, pandemic is interesting to see because this is what we've been shouting for for eight years. And suddenly we feel that we are in the center of attention of people. And um, we hope that this will also bring, bring us as a society uh, further and, and make new measures, take new steps. So that's our audience. Now, once you know your audience, um, you also try to find out what, what, what they want, what, are, what is happening in their mind. So we found out some trends that are still today uh, totally true. Uh, customers today or, or people actually want to buy a story. They're not inter interested anymore in, in a brand, but they're more interested in what's behind the brand. What's, what, what are they doing? Are they transparent? Are they paying their factories well and, and also in difficult times like these uh, what's happening and it's very interesting to see our competitors struggling today they've been shouting for the last two or three years that they were also very sustainable and very everything and suddenly when there's a problem the first thing what happens is cancellations and four million people in Bangladesh on the run because all the factories are suddenly closed so we believe that's not the way to go um, we are transparent. Uh, you can come and have a look in the factory we work with in Tunisia. And um, actually today they are closed for two, two weeks because of the, the Tunisian government uh, wants that. Uh, but I think they will start up uh, very quickly because there's not a big problem there. So we see another trend, which is uh, owning less. More and more people will say, you know, I prefer to have one good quality pair of jeans instead of 10 throwaway jeans for, for one tenth of the price. And that's again, that's what we hope for and that's what we are aiming for. And that's why we don't make 
so much collections. We, we, we only have our essentials. And sometimes we add one, one color or one washing or one pair of jeans goes out and another one goes in. We are very careful with that. So we are not making every week new collections, but we are just building on our collection. We have now 10 models for women and eight for men in different colors and uh, all the sizes are never out of stock. And again, this is very interesting also for retailers that are having, that were already having a difficult time and it's even more terrible now. But we help them by saying, okay, we have this collection, they're beautiful jeans. Um, buy a little bit from us, see how it works. If you can sell them well, you can pre reorder the next day and we'll deliver. Or, um, or, you know, if it really doesn't work, there's not a problem for you because you didn't buy excessively. So we are not pushing the, 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 ex, the, the retailers to buy too much. So uh, one of the reasons is that we do not want to find mud jeans is in sales or, or, or prices lowered. It's always 119 euros also on our website and that's it. So we are getting away from this whole sales idea and end of season uh, dumping, those kind of things. So how do we try to do this? And I myself like very much this, uh, this schedule. It's the, the good is the new cool, cool model which is again today really hot i think try to do good with your company is what you have to do today and and be honest about it so uh, i'll go through them later with also some examples but we have to know our purpose so that's very clear we started this company eight years ago with the purpose of changing the fashion industry and being a a, a company that does everything different and first of all try to to grow ourselves of course and, and that's difficult because it's a huge market. But secondly, also be an example company where people could say, okay, these, these guys from Mudgees, they're doing it and it works. So we have to change as well because, you know, we, we show that it can be done. So that's about our purpose. Uh, we have to find our allies. Uh, who can we work with? Who can, can um, help us to grow and also uh, strengthen each other? Uh, we, we think we should think in, in citizens, not in customers. You're all citizens and, and we live on this earth and we, we are not trying to push you, but we're trying to, to think with you and, and help you in making the right choices and offer something that can be the right choice. We want to lead with the cool. And that's also interesting now with all the new social media and everything. Uh, there, of course, there are influences uh, talking a lot of rubbish, but there are also micro influencers that are really having uh, beautiful people following them. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a big vegan society following us because we are vegan uh, with our genes. So those things really work well. You will not find a lot of advertisements from us. We want to show our, our customers, <laughs> saying wrong, but our citizens that we are trying to solve problems and not advertising something and what's not interesting. We think that people are the new media. That's also why we started um, th this ambassador program. If you go on our website and uh, you go to the right upside, you will see get rewarded. And that's our ambassador program where, program where we ask you to, um, to, to share pictures of your genes with us or uh, all kinds of things. Please have a look at that. Uh, and we, we want to back up the promise with the proof. So we, we are every year now uh, submitting a uh, sustainability report. The, the 2020 is nearly ready, but you can read the 2019 sustainability report. You will find that everything is transparent. You, you will find from A to Z, everything will be doing until the genes are delivered on your do doorstep. And it, it's 78 pages. It's written very well. Eva did this for us. And... Um, it's a beautiful thing. So please have a look at it. It's also on our website. Um, on the downside, you scroll down. Or if, if people want uh, the link to it, I, I can put it in the chat later. So again, uh, some, some um, examples of this good as a new cool model. Uh, we went uh, four years ago on a recycle tour because people were asking us, are you really taking back all these genes and what are you going to do with them? So we said, okay, we'll show you. We'll, we'll put them into uh, cars and we drive to um, 
to Valencia, where are the factories that are shredding our old genes, that are mixing it with new organic cotton, that are making the yarn again and weaving the, the denim material, uh, dyeing it and everything. So that's what we did in 2016. We made a whole uh, tour about it. We, we covered it on our social media uh, channels. And we really had a lot of um, exchange with our customers with it, with our followers, because they really liked to see what was really happening. There's a, there's a movie about this tour on, on our YouTube channel. I'll not show it to you now. And uh, here are some pictures about the tour. We did a beach cleanup uh, halfway in the south of France, of west, west uh, France. Vieux Bouco. It was really interesting to see what you can gather together with the Surf Riders Foundation and uh, the University of Troyes with, with 200 people. What, what kind of rubbish you get from a beach in two hours. Something to do. But anyhow, arrived in the factory, you will see that we were throwing ourselves the jeans into the shredder making them smaller and smaller until you get this light blue cotton bulb again. Then make it into this yarn again, weaving it. I'm going very quickly, but this is a, really a lot of processes. Again, you can see this on a, on a movie on our YouTube channel. And this ready-made fabric then goes to Tunisia, to the factory we work with, um, who is really a, a very impressive factory because they have everything under one roof. So not only the sewing and the cutting part, but also the, the washing part, which is most of the time one of the trouble in, the, in the, the denim industry, because a lot of chemicals are used there and, and a lot of sandblasting and it's not good, but there's a lot of new techniques now, which I will show you later. I have a small movie of that, which I will show you. So we went on transparency tour two years ago to Tunisia with the whole team also to get this idea of how, how, how is a pair of jeans made. It's not, not easy. There's a lot of steps. You have to cut it. You have to make the patterns. And it was in the week of um, Fashion Revolution, which was good for us. We, we could, again, here share all these, these pictures and this information about how the people work there and how, how clean it is. And, and also to show that you can make very beautiful denim factories uh, if, if you want to, here is our uh, textile engineer Dion, one of the shareholders, and our team uh, what, explaining how, how to make a pair of jeans. And here's a small movie. I hope you can hear the sound. Okay. Thank you. Virginia. So you can see it's a, it's, it's a beautiful factory. People are happy to work there. Uh, we did a lot of audits. Uh, they also produce for other uh, denim brands. And uh, with our system of never out of stock and, and selling through the whole year through our, our jeans, we can offer them a very nice flat um, order scheme. So it's not like usual in the, in the textile industry where suddenly there's a lot of orders and then a month there's no order at all. We try to make it easy for them also and be able to produce the whole year around. So getting back to, uh, to um, B Corps, I like the, the, the slogan very much, use your business as a force for good. 
we decided to join this in 2013. We were one of the first in, uh, in Holland. You have to sign the Declaration of Interdependence. Uh, I'll advise you to have a look at their, their website. And if you have a company or starting, have a look at this because it, it gives you also a, a lead way of a lot of things you have to think about. And in many places where you, you can be more sustainable or make better decisions. It's also a, a help for this. So, you know, I'll let you read this because I don't need to explain this. But um, as a B Corp, yeah, we believe that, that this is the way to go. We have to, we have to, that we must be the change we seek in the world. And that's definitely clear for us that all businesses ought to be conducted as people and things mattered. Through our products, we want to do the best practice. It's all clear, you know, so please uh, have a look at it. I don't have to explain this to you. I just wanted to show this to you that, that it's, it's a very good way to think and, and act in your company. We joined in their net zero program. Although we are already net zero, uh, our company is CO2 neutral. Um, we offset still CO2, but we uh, cover that. And um, it also helps us uh, bring our message out, reach more people, uh, connect with other B Corpses. We've received orders from people, uh, for instance, in Spain, they ordered aprons from us with, with our recycled material. So it's, it's working uh, as a very good um, platform also for us. And many people ask me, what are the advantages of, of uh, becoming a B Corp? Well, it's of course the whole network, but it's also um, attracting young talent. So many young talented people contact us, want to join our company uh, with the vision of, of saying, okay, I want to work in the fashion industry, but I want to do something better than, than the, the old fashioned way. And B Corp is a very good one for this. They, they find us easily. Um, and our customers are, are, are really connect, connected to us because they, they, they can also see our assessment. They, they can find how many points we received for, for which different parts of the uh, assessment. And again, like, like young talented people uh, join your company, which is of course the best that can happen. A company like Triodos Bank is also a B Corp, Tony Chocoloni, um, and for us the benchmark is of course uh, Patagonia. We can learn a lot from them. Um, and we think together we can build a more inclusive and sustainable economy that works for everyone. And again, these are the times that this kind of things we are working on already for eight years now. And today it's not, couldn't be a better time to, to think about all these things. So we did a nice collaboration to get back to the, the, the good is a new cool model. We did last year a very nice collaboration with, um, with Sea Shepherd. For them, it was a way of showing uh, that they could work with a, with a beautiful uh, jeans brand. And for us, it was a way to reach, uh, you know, for instance, on, on Instagram, they have 500,000 followers. So we need also to find ways to reach our customers. And, and we think in this kind of ways, we are joining forces. We did a beach cleanup with them in, uh, in Bergen, in Holland, this year. Uh, and again, this, this is just a nice way of expressing yourself and showing that you want to be different as a company, that you're not just a jeans, jeans company. So what goes right? That's platforms like uh, Insta. They were really right, uh, well for us. We have a lot of followers, a lot of people commenting on things that we do, uh, sometimes critical, which is great. Um, and then I come back to um, some of your questions again. Many, time, many times people ask me, uh, how do you finance this? Because it's very difficult. Of course, we are paying a, a, a fair and honest price to the people that make our jeans. This means that we pay a higher buying price. Uh, we cannot sell much more expensive. So in between, 
the margin is, is uh, less than what our competitors have. So it's more difficult. Uh, so how did I find it? In, in the beginning, I financed it with my own money and, um, and the crowdfunding. Then like-minded people joined the team, like Danique and Dion and Petra. Uh, Stichting Doen helped us with a loan. Uh, the new team invested again. Triodos helped us. And this year, last year, we have this, this equity investment, which can really take us further. And even through this difficult times, we are happy to be financially solid. So the other questions are, and this is, of course, difficult, but um, what's going to happen after this crisis, after this virus? And I think the world will not be the same. I'm very hopeful that we as mankind will come out better. I think big fashion companies some of them show their real face now and cancel orders in, in production, which is of course very poor because they've been talking about sustainability and they've signed conventions and things. And now when things get worse, suddenly they're all lost and they, they act differently. So the poorest people are suffering the most at the moment. I hope that we as citizens of this world will have fewer possessions. I hope that people will travel less. Uh, you, you do realize, me myself also, that, that doing things like this online with Zoom <laughs> works really well. We, we had a meeting two weeks ago planned where people would come and fly in from Poland and from I don't know where. And it was canceled and we did it actually online with, with five or six people. It went really very well. So it's also a wake up call to say, guys, fly less and, and do online meetings. I hope that people will start making more conscious choices <clears throat> and that the, the mindset will change from disposable to quality things. And we are here to serve them. We do this for eight years now and we are ready to serve you and, and deliver to your doorstep a great pair of jeans that doesn't pollute the world so much. Um, we even go until the end, like today, uh, we deliver on, on bikes in Holland in 33 cities. So every step we do, we try to make things better. Um, our warehouse is still working uh, today. They work a lot with robots. So um, part of the business is, is still going on there. Unluckily for us, the, the part that we, the deliveries to the 300 stores we deliver in 29 countries is, is nearly completely stopped. So it's also for us not, not easy. But online, we're still doing well. People are still ordering our jeans and uh, we now have the summer items coming in. So with this weather, that still goes okay. okay. We would like to change the world, not your style, but make it the best you can. And um, before I start asking, asking uh, sorry, replying to your questions, I will ask you some questions. So please, Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, all those channels. Subscribe to our newsletter because we really want to tell you every week what we are doing and where we're heading to, uh, to give you an idea. We're working now on, on a 100% post-consumer waste recycled pair of jeans, which will come out one day, maybe this year, maybe next year. Uh, do me a favor, read our sustainability report and uh, become an ambassador on the ambassador program. And of course, the most important thing is walk the talk, wear our jeans, help us by wearing our jeans and talking about it. And to help you today, I give you this 20% discount code. I hope this helps. And I'll give you the time to write this down and then I'll go and have a look at the, the chats. Okay, I have them here. I will go um, from the top. Thank you for saying good afternoon, Kim and Christine from Comtex in Denmark. Hello. Hey, from Switzerland. No questions yet. Hello from Antwerp. Good afternoon. Very kind of you. <laughs> All over the world, we have people watching us. I'm from Ghent, Belgium. That's the city where I lived for a long time. Leiden, Twente, Bergamo. Okay, those are the first questions are coming in. How is your logistics setup and how do you do this in a sustainable way? 
asks Lisa. Like I said, our logistics are, we have one warehouse for the whole of Europe. Uh, we are helping retailers with this because they can buy a little bit and then be delivered the next days when they sell well. We deliver our, our web shop orders in Holland by bike in 33 uh, cities, but the rest is still done the old fashioned way with, with uh, trucks and things. So we don't have a much better way at the moment for this. What is your process to 100% recycled denim? Okay, this is more the part of our textile engineer Dion, but I'll try to explain to you. We are going to use two different uh, techniques. One is the one we use already today, which is uh, shredding, really tearing apart the jeans, and we call that mechanical recycling. The other one is, uh, is uh, called chemical recycling, or what do we say, Dion? molecular recycling which is the more uh, gentle way to say this chemically sounds very bad but it's with a salt solution and you can make a thinner yarn they look more like a viscose yarn and mixing the two we think will bring us a, um, a denim yarn again and then we would have a 100 percent recycled but it's still under work and we'll try to make a documentary about it which steps we take and how far we go and we'll keep you updated in the newsletter. Um, do you have a specific target customer? Yeah, that's our conscious uh, consumer. Like I said, it's in the slide before um, that there are people that are also worried. There's not really an age group because pe mostly people have children, they're well educated. And they have this spirit of saying, okay, things, let's, let's try to do things differently. We offset, uh, here's a question about our CO2 neutrality. We offset our CO2 in uh, two programs. We first did an LCA and calculated how much CO2 we emit as a company. And then we bought um, the CO2, um, um, how do you call that? Offsetting things so, it's still, of course, the best way is try to offset yourself as less as possible CO2. So that's why we, we are not sending yarns and materials all over the world. Uh, it might so, sound strange, but working only with Spain and Tunisia is in the textile industry a very small circle. That, that's really not much. It doesn't go to Bangladesh and China and back and forth again. That's, that's what it is. So it's already a big um, improvement would really like to know how you measure impact. We do that together with EcoChain. Um, we now have the results that have been measuring for us. It's, it's with a sort of blockchain technique. They measure everything we do in every product. And it goes for the, the water, the, the chemicals, the, the, the everything. And we can now show you for every product how much energy is used and how much water is used, how much chemicals are used. Um, we will add this to our web shop. I think some, some items are already under work where you can uh, see very clearly what we have done and what the impact is. So have a look at that please. And we will also uh, tell you more about this in our newsletters. Do you pay in the factory living wage? Yes, we do that. And for Tunisia, of course, that's not the same living wage as for Holland, but uh, it's, it's controlled also by the, the audit we had from the Fair Wear Foundation. And now we did a, again a new audit. And IKEA is going to do an audit in the factory there also. Uh, so yes, are all the jeans that are returned after 12 months recycled or are they sent out if others, if they are in good state? That's Eva, a lot of questions from Eva. Yeah, Eva, of course, some jeans come back and they look really fantastic or even better than we sent them because they are used and they have this fantastic look. Um, those jeans are sold uh, in our small shop here in, in uh, Lare as uh, vintage jeans. So, and the jeans that are really broken, many times people from Amsterdam send their jeans back, they, they cycle a lot. So they are mostly worn in the crotch. And 
they are irreparable though so they go into the the, the recycle bin to be shredded and to be used for new jeans it's really nice interesting story hope many brands will follow yes we hope that too <laughs> we are in contact with other brands uh, and we are open to share our knowledge and our experiences and what went wrong with us or what went very good and uh, for us also one of the reasons for existing is also lifting the whole denim industry to the next level and, and make this this interesting industry because again we like jeans everybody likes jeans to take them to the next level what is your experience with working with repack asks anton i need a zip uh, we worked for two years with uh, repack um, with different experiences one is that it's it's quite expensive so what we should have done at that time is say ask the customers to say if you want to be sent by repack uh, we have to add two or three euros we didn't do that at the time because we thought we wanted to do it without adding uh, cost um, the system of repack at the time was also that with the barcode um, people could use that to get a discount on other companies that were also working with repack if you, if you send your old repack back and we had big hopes of that, that, for instance, Philippe Paca is also using Repack. And we were hoping that customers from Philippe Paca would also buy from us. But that really didn't happen. And we, in the meantime, we changed logistic partner uh, one year ago. And with this new logistic partner who is very much robotized, it's, it's nearly impossible to work with Repack. So we are in contact with them. We are trying to solve this problem. But at this moment, we deliver only in without any plastic, with, with uh, carton boxes. And uh, that's it for the moment. But they can also be reused for sending back uh, our jeans. Did you use a particular circular business model theory or canvas or just started to do good? Um, no, we, we just started to do good. And we said, we're, we're just going to start and see what's happening. And we learned a lot during the way and of course, during the way we did make our business canvas and we did of course think about it and changed things and, and improve things but the start was really like okay let's get started let's do it and um, see what happens and that also made us make a lot of uh, mistakes but after eight years we can say we have a lot of ex experience and we are ready to uh, to uh, exchange with you and I hope that our mistakes can help other people uh, build this kind of business uh, faster and quicker and with less mistakes, maybe. You mentioned some trends are there. There are nine concepts mentioned in the sustainability report. But what are the most urgent problems you solve for your target group? Let me see that again. You mentioned some trends and there are nine concept mentioned in the sustainable world, but what are the most urgent problems to solve? It? I think that um, spoiling water in our business is, is very important to solve. We save a lot of water and we are very proud of that. The factory in Tunisia is recycling the water with the re re reversed osmosis. So I think the water thing is important. Um, the other thing is the energy and there we can still improve a lot we are pushing our factory in in, in tunisia to put uh, solar on the on the roof which is not the case at the moment but uh, our spanish factories are, are doing that already so there's always room for in, uh, improvement um, i think the, the whole fast fashion idea many people don't know this but one of our biggest challenges is, is uh, not to join all our competitors and making every two or three months a whole new collection and, and, and do this whole business which is totally ridiculous and to try to explain this to retailers to customers to say listen you don't need to have all these kind of new stuff every 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 three months uh, i think we help the world a lot by saying okay let's let's be not ridiculous let's make very beautiful jeans, beautiful fittings, beautiful materials, high quality materials, and, and, um, and work with that. 
Um, then Julie asked me, what do you think of current textile collections in the Netherlands? Does it contribute to circularity? I'm wondering what you think of current textile collections. No, I'm, I'm afraid that um, if I look around me and I, if I see companies around me making all these collections all the time, there's not much circularity uh, in Holland. How many sales per month do we need to become profitable? That's a good question, Elena. Mm. We, we deliver now to around 300 stores in Europe. And on our own website, we sell between um, 30 and 50 pairs of jeans per day. And uh, we need to double that. If we really want to be a successful company and become profitable and pay ourselves reasonable salaries and, and also um, do some um, research for the future, uh, we need to grow with double digits still. We are growing every year with 50%, but at the moment it's, it's hard to, to, to be a break even. We are nearly there, but uh, the volume has to go up a little. And that's strange because of course, we are against selling too much stuff. And, and, but as a company, we, we, we need a little bit bigger volume. Um, still a lot of questions to go. I'll try to go through them. Hi, thank you for walking us through. What would you say is the hardest part to set up a circular renting business? Okay, I would say um, to finance it, of course, we have to buy the jeans, we have to stock them, we have to sell them to you, we have to build websites, we have to pay people, and before it's in your hands, uh, we have done a lot of investment, and then you start paying for 12 months. So to cover this um, is difficult. So uh, luckily, part of what we do is also just selling with, with a deposit of 10 euro discount if you send back your old jeans or any other jeans that, that can be from another brand, as long as it has 95% cotton in it. But, but uh, financing it all is, is the hardest part. Okay, here's a good question. 40% post-consumer waste, you can use only mainly from your own recycled jeans. If yes, what do you do with the other 60% waste of jeans? Do you reuse all trims? Yeah. Now we, we use all our jeans because we are growing, we need more and more jeans. So we just have to add 60% organic cotton. So 100% of our jeans are recycled and more than that, because we also accept now other brands that have 95% uh, cotton in them. The beach cleanup that you do with your HQ team, did you hire to do this? Now we did it with our team. And you talk about Corona and canceling orders and poor people suffering the most. What measures did MUD take to avoid this to affect your work and affect the emergency? We paid our orders. We continue to take our orders. We had a, a delivery just a, a week before the Tunisian factory had to close. We accept that, of course, we pay them and we give them new orders now. So when they come back from, from their lockdown, because they also have a three week lockdown, which we cannot change, they will immediately have work from us and, and we pay that up front. Hello from Berlin. I'm interested in how the fashion industry can go beyond zero impact and can actually create a positive impact on society. So my first question would be, what is the actual cr criteria for fashion to be good? <laughs> to make high quality products where everybody in the chain is well paid and all the materials used are non-polluting. So to give you an idea, we have uh, uh, um, uh, dye stuff, indigo, which used to be a very polluted uh, dye stuff. Now there's a biodegradable one, which we use, of course. Um, the, the, the bleaching we do now with ozone instead of uh, heavy chemicals, the, um, to make the, the, the worn out look is done by, um, by laser. So I think every day you have to ask your, yourself the question, where, where can I improve? Are there new techniques? Can we use that? And then we do that. And since we're a small company, 
we can change very quickly from one thing to the other and, and do it better. Okay, let's go to Elena Hazer. Elena, here from, the, from Holland. Being a teacher at MBO Zatkin in Rotterdam, I'm preparing new lessons with starting point nudgings. How could you contribute to the education? How can we collaborate? Okay, Ellen, we get these questions a lot from many, many, many schools and many um, uh, universities. We feel it as part of, of our job also to interact with, with educational platforms. We sometimes give guest lectures, but we cannot do it all the time. Of course, you, like I said, we are a small team. If I would go whole year round to all the universities that ask us, uh, I couldn't be able to sell jeans anymore. So what we try to do is share our knowledge. We, we, we give you our presentations from which you can take slides if you want. Um, we, we have the sustainability report, which, can, which you can study and which we think hopefully will teach you a lot. And every month uh, we do a webinar for also students that have to do theses or that they, they do their last uh, school work about mudgings and we answer, answer their questions like we do today. This is a big one, but every first Monday of the month at four o'clock, we do a webinar for students. And for schools, we, we are in the make of, uh, like Tony Chocoloni does, uh, a package for schools, which will help you to, um, to, to, to deliver our message. I hope that answers your question. What's the next step on the circularity ladder for your ambition improve the world? We want to go to 100% post-consumer waste recycled pair of jeans. That's what we want to be the first one and uh, we are going to be. How will COVID-19 impact sustainable fashion brands like yours? Something you worry about? Well, like we all know, it's, a, it's an unfair world. Uh, big fast fashion companies have made a fortune the, the last 10 years and they have a big war cash, let's say, where they can lean on now. Smaller companies like ours are not so financially strong and it's more difficult. Luckily, we are at the moment still good, but we, can need, we need every uh, help from everybody uh, to support us. Um, yeah, again, it, it's, it's an unfair, unfair playing field because uh, it, it comes down to how strong financially you are also to, to survive out of this uh, crisis. But we hope that, that consumers and people will start realizing why we got into this crisis and what's all into this crisis and with their behavior that they can change it. And again, then we are ready to, to give you the right choices and deliver a pair of jeans that doesn't uh, break down the world. You take voluntarily extended producer responsibility. Yeah, that's well said. What would you think of a mandatory production responsibility in the Netherlands? It would be great if, if there's law enforcement, but I'm very skeptic about this, but uh, we are asking for this for a long time. Um, there must be a level playing field. If we are using 40% post-consumer waste that are all genes, where somebody already paid VAT on, it's unfair that we again have to ask our customers to pay again VAT. So this is one of the things I'm always fighting about and saying that there has to be starting to become a level playing field, but it's hard. For a startup brand, how do they measure the environmental impact? For example, how much CO2 brands save? I'm creating a mindful collection with upcycled material. What is the most effective way to measure how much waste I save from landfill? We, we did it in different ways the last eight years. We did first did our first LCA uh, four years ago. Um, today we use EcoChain. Again, like I said, they are measuring everything for us. We have to give them all, of course, all the information. Uh, it's not cheap. And um, if you are a small startup, I wouldn't advise you to do it like this. But um, there are companies that can help you by... Um, 
by doing your, your life cycle assessment. Are you sharing your insights, new insights and manufacturing in a kind of open database? Asks Ursula Maria Salbury. Yeah, that's our sustainability report. We try to make it every year. So please read the one from 2019 and the, the 2020 one is coming up. Everything is there, we do. So please have a look at it. Will people consume differently? And do you think their behaviors will have a long lasting impact? <laughs> I'm not a prophet. I can only hope this will happen. So <laughs> let's hope. Are your trims also eco? Yes. What are the zipper types, pocket fabrics, and threads made from? Again, this information is in our sustainability reports. The, the, the buttons are from an Italian company called Prim. There also you can see how they make them and, and where they make them. Um, some of the questions are getting double, so I will skip them. Post-corona post crisis sustainability will be the first priority in fashion, is my humble opinion. I agree, Auke. Well said. Are you prepared to scale up considerably? Yes, that's we are, what we are trying. We are... Um, trying to get funds for it. We already got funds a year ago, but of course, if you scale quickly, uh, more money is needed. So our, our basic goal today is to see if we can get, uh, again, scale up uh, financing to, to, to be able to do this. But yes, we would like to. Cora Wopma from Binthout. I'm interested in how you managed to change to a lease construction. It's working well in Berlin now, that's cool. Did you say it will become the new standard? What are the lessons learned? Yeah. Or, yes, uh, it's getting more and more important. Uh, we are also now working on a concept that retailers can do together with us um, this leasing system. And it's going to be for the leaser a very interesting uh, concept because there again, they don't need to have this huge stock because if you, if you make jeans, you have to imagine that, that there are at least 20 sizes if you make the length also and all the washings and all the models. So it's, it's for, for smaller retailers, very difficult to have everything in stock. So we centralize the stock. We give you a, a program which in your retail, in your shop you can use. And that's going to be, um, we're working on that now. So we're also using this crisis to, to step back and see what we can improve uh, on our IT platform, on our website, on our uh, uh, working with, with the shops. And this is one of the things that will come out uh, after the crisis. COVID-19 caused a scream for buy local. On the other side, the poorest people in South Asia, as you say, are suffering from these events. How do you adapt your communication to make your consumer understand the importance of collaborations with these countries for production? Although I've been uh, in this business for a long time, um, I don't think it's a great idea to, to make things uh, far away. Uh, I really think we shouldn't. And it's very clear now, if you even take the, the masks today, it's much better if you can just make them here at home. So um, I don't believe in, in uh, outsourcing anymore uh, far away. I was wondering if you made trade-offs at the beginning of your company between vision and practicality in order to grow to make it as a startup if so do you have an example to show how to balance or not to balance that um, now we we didn't do much um, uh, of this although maybe one example uh, if you make jeans nowadays it's it's well at demand to have some elastan some stretch in your jeans of course, we like to be pure and only make jeans of cotton. But demand from the market was that there is some stretch in it. So we are not making jeans that have 8% elastan in it. We go to 2%. That's the maximum we do, or 3%. To have this, uh, uh, this stretch and still be able to, to deliver jeans that can be recycled. So you can say that sort of... Uh, sort of a, a, a trade-off. 
do you work together with other sustainable non-competing brands for different industries? Uh, do you work together with other sustainable non-competing brands? Um, yes, I'm looking for examples. We do, um, maybe that's not really the answer, but we do deliver aprons, for instance, to hotels that want to have their workers uh, or their people uh, running around in, 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 in gear that is sustainable. Um, yeah, we do, sorry, yes, we, we, we did work together with uh, a Berlin uh, streetwear brand who was making beautiful uh, sweatshirts in organic cotton. So we made a collection with them together. It happens, we can do it, yeah. Is your innovative technical process designed by Mudgeens or by the factory? It's open source, I read, which I really admire to drive change on a large scale, but why aren't more brands using this? Because it's more expensive. If you use um, post-consumer waste, it's, it's more difficult. So the factory in, in Spain, Royo and uh, Royo Chado and uh, Recover Tax, they are doing this for us. We are also their guinea pig, so we are the small company that can uh, can try things. They're very happy with us because we are one of the only brands that, that take this 40% recycled denim. Um, but it's more expensive. Uh, if you use virgin cotton, non uh, Biologic, it's it's cheaper than than the one with uh, recycled cotton. So I'm afraid that's where things uh, that's why things don't happen. Why are you not part of the Dutch Agreement of Sustainable Garments and Textile? Because we do not agree with it. Um, you can see that today, many companies have signed this agreement, and what's happening? They're canceling their orders. All of these companies, you can ask them what they are doing. We go way further than what is in this agreement. Uh, there are even things that we totally disagree. There are companies signing this agreement and it says that within five years they will change their habits. And that is, uh, I can make a joke about this that, that I take from uh, our friend Thomas Rao. That's the same if you have a girlfriend and you say, uh, okay, let's, um, Let's cheat on each other for another five years, and then after that, we'll say we don't cheat anymore. It's it's a totally misguided uh, agreement. I'm not in favor of it. Sorry, Susan. Many people disagree with me, but okay, that's nice. Who do you suggest as a student? What do you suggest as a student? We should be developing or research to help the fashion industry make the switch to circular design and business models. The most difficult part of this is that I can tell you all techniques techniques exist. Many new things are happening uh, on, the, on the process of making it can happen. But still, mass market people are only buying the, the cheapest things. You can see Primark, they're opening so many stores. And that's because there are three things important for, for many people. It's price, price and price. So where we need help is how to how to reach the whole society and how to explain to everybody that circular design is the new business model to go and that there's no other there's no other future for us. So we need help there. Yeah. How 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 do we shout out to everybody on a creative way that a company like ours um, is the way forward? So I hope that answers your question. What would you do different if you could start again? <laughs> Says Maike Kogel. Um, uh, that's, that's a very long list. <laughs> um, I, would, I would think I would make the, the business plan in the beginning better, make sure that I have the, the big funding right from the start and create a better team right from the start. We were lucky that during our way that, that people, like-minded people joined us and invested, but it would have been better if we right from the start we said, this is what we're going to do. This is how much money we need. These are the people we need and then start. Uh, 
Okay, I'm reading your questions. My startup Wasteworks just put our first product on the market, a circular bio-based and climate adaptive trottoir sidewalk. What would be your tips to get investors in so we can grow? Uh, the tip is make, make a, try to make a business plan for the coming five years. That is uh, um, what the team is, what your product is, how big the market is, you, you think, and this has to be um, uh, supported by proof. You have to do a lot of research and then investors are, are getting interested, but you have to reach, you have to have a, a, a proof of concept to be able to, to get really big investors on board. Is there a tip you would give to someone who's just at the start of starting an ecological business? Uh, that's too huge as a question for now. There are many tips, but again, try to make your plan, try to imagine a, a solution. That's really a solution where you can help um, citizens with uh, becoming, so try to solve a problem. What was approximately your initial investment when you started? Were there, where do you source or get a cotton? Are your jeans 100% cotton? If not, yeah, we, we do use um, biodegradable elastan now. So many of our jeans are 100% cotton and many are 98, 2% elastan. And I started off with around 1 million euro. And the other one is where do you source organic cotton? It's, it used to be from um, Okino Faso and now it comes from India. And it's got certified GOTS. Okay, Jan Pleins. Jan from Germany. So many good questions. So I won't ask one to give Bert more space for all the questions here. Thank you for this. Bert, you can stop reading. Okay, I can stop reading here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we meet a lot of fear of bad PR from our customers when we talk to them about going sustainable. Today they are producing in the most polluting way, but going sustainable is apparently a hard decision to make. How did you handle this? We didn't have to handle this because we started off as a sustainable company. So I also wouldn't know how to do this. I think you have to start and build in the, the sustainability part in your company. And that's why we also are a B Corp. It's, it's written in our statues from our company saying, this is what we want to do. Thanks for sharing your expertise. Would you consider selling your returned lease items secondhand like Philippe Arcades? Yeah, we are doing that. You can come to Laren and, and fit the jeans that came back from, uh, from the lease. And yes, I think the secondhand uh, clothing is, is a very big growing market. Uh, but our jeans are so good that we don't get enough jeans back. So people are, are keeping them very long. <laughs> Have you had to change your supply chain structure over time? Um, yeah, we did. We first bought uh, only jeans with 100% organic cotton. And then we learned more and more that uh, recycled cotton could be used. Um, and we bought our jeans also in Italy. But while controlling this, we realized that it's very difficult to control. Some subcontracting was done uh, in Albania, uh, difficult to, to really follow. So we said, no, we want to have a place where all the jeans are made under one roof and not the, the, the washing and the everything outside. So, so it's very controllable for us now. We work on one spot in Tunisia and that's it. Um, I have 47 new messages. I'll propose that I'll read through 10 big ones of them, if you don't mind. And the other ones we will try to, with our team, um, try to uh, reply by, by um, messages, by returned messages, if you don't mind. So I'll quickly scan through a few where we think, which maybe I didn't say yet. Do you see some interesting one, Dion, that I skipped or not? 
I need help of Dion here. He's he's supporting me at the time. Shirley from Singapore. I love to lease your jeans, but in this climate, jeans are too uncomfortable. With growing markets in Asia, will you launch lighter weight NOS? Yes. We just launched a new material, which is lighter weight. And we do have already uh, skirts and shorts on our site. And we are coming out with a beautiful new style, which is um, made from undyed uh, recycled cotton material. It looks really nice. And we can, um, we can overdye that with, with, um, with a mineral dye, which gives really beautiful washed out colors, red and taupe and, and yellow. Um, the first pictures are getting uh, online. So please keep a look at our site. You will see these new things uh, coming and you can also lease them. <clears throat> uh, here's a question for Elise. I will try to explain again. For how long do people rent jeans? Do they rent them to test the model in the... Do they rent them to test the model or in the long run? But people... Uh, so the lease contract is for, for 12 months. After that, you can decide to keep them longer, but you've paid for them. So you pay 29 euro as a... Become a member. You can rent up to three jeans for 750 a month and after one year you can switch if you want if you want to keep them longer keep them longer but you don't need to pay anymore i hope that's clear and we are going to try to because this is a question we get very much try to make a, a small um, video of this or uh, to make the system better so that we don't get these questions anymore <laughs> there are many companies out there luckily who are trying to change or transform the fashion industry. I'm also part of the startup team, which is trying to do this in the Netherlands as well. So my question is how can the collaboration between companies like, you, like our collaborate more effectively? Um, Daniel Cohen, Stuart, please contact us, send us a mail, info, and we'll see how we can uh, share our knowledge and again here I would say read our sustainability report because it's it's very transparent it, it explains everything and if you still have questions then then come to us so um, I'll leave it for so far if your questions is not answered then please forgive me but I hope you had a interesting hour with us and I hope that I can motivate and inspire and that, that our company, that we as a team can inspire you to, to uh, do a, a similar sort of thing and be brave and just do it. And uh, I hope to hear from you. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye bye. But there, there is a, I hope we made the, a recording of this which we can share with you i have to check that with yes there is so if you want to see the recording i'm happy to share it with anybody just send us an email to info at mudjeans.eu and um, don't forget to order your lease jeans today with the discount code which is here circular web one thank you